I have a fully paid for and licensed version of Photoshop, and I still choose to do all of my artwork in this free drawing software. That should be a pretty good indication of how much I absolutely love Autodesk Sketchbook Pro. And I'm not the only person that uses it professionally. I know Ken Lashley, the great Led Killa uses it. I know Trent Kenayuga uses it a lot. There's a lot of artists that really like this software, and one of the best things about it is it is completely free. I mean, it didn't used to be. Back in early 2018 and before, it was a paid for software, and then they just made it free. I don't really know why, but I'm happy with it. I was willing to pay for it, but I'd much rather have it for free. That's great. I use this software for all my drawings, especially everything on this channel. I build my animated characters in it. I build backgrounds in it, just everything. I've even done some frame by frame animation in it. Back when I used to work in Photoshop, my art looked like this. Oh my God, what the f is that, bro? Oh my God, that thing looks dead, man. And now that I'm working in Sketchbook Pro, my art looks like this. That. I love, I absolutely love. I want it. It's everything. No. Okay, that's not fair. That's more a matter of me becoming a better artist than not so much the software I was using. But regardless, Sketchbook Pro is great. It's got a great interface. It's super user friendly. It's free. It's free. It's free. Plus, you can get it on your computer. You can get it on your tablet. You can get it on your phone. Why would you want it on your phone? I don't know. Should I do an episode where I try drawing on Sketchbook Pro on my phone? No, I shouldn't. It'll be terrible. Don't ask me to do that. Anyway, in today's episode, I'm going to take you through the basics of Sketchbook Pro, the different tools that I use, and go through a whole drawing from start to finish, just talking about my process in this software that I really, really love and suggest you take a crack at. And if at any point you find yourself enjoying this video, please leave a like and subscribe and click the bell because there's lots more of this kind of stuff coming up in the future and in the past. I have past videos you can watch. Anyway, let's jump in. Alright, so let me give you a quick rundown of the layout, because that's one of the most appealing things about this software. When you open it up, you'll see something like this. And it is just... Ah, gorgeous. If this layout was a celebrity, it would be Ryan Reynolds, or Emily Blunt, or Danny DeVito, or any of those gorgeous A-list celebrities. It's just so simple and beautiful. The only thing I change from this is I just add the layers option, and I make that nice and big and when I'm recording my videos a lot of the time I always crop it in and just record this kind of area so that it's just that much sleeker but that's so easy to do and it's just so it's such a nice simple layout and you've got everything you can need to start drawing right away you've got your color puck that you can tap on and change your color you've got the size and opacity that you just click and hold on this guy and scroll up and down or side to side and it changes the size and the opacity of your brush and you've got all your brushes right over here these aren't the brushes that you see when you'll open up the software because these are ones that i've downloaded some of them are ones i've customized but another great thing that I love about Sketchbook Pro is it's so easy to download more brushes and brush packs. All you have to do is go up into Window and go down to Sketchbook Extras. Click on that and it loads up just a whole bunch of different packs of brushes that are available to you to download. They've got a whole bunch, I've got most of these downloaded because I've had this software for a long time. So I just every now and then download a whole bunch and use them. But you can see there's just so many, so many options, and here, I'll just download a random one. Let's, uh, let's say these free brushes, Sumi, Su Sumi E. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong, but yeah, you press download, downloads it, you press show in brush library, and it brings up your brush library, and it shows you all the new brushes that you've just downloaded. And there are so many cool brushes, and I just, I love how easy that is. Like, it's just so easy to find new brushes that you can mess around with and play with, and I think they update that a decent amount. I'm not totally sure, but I've never run out of brushes to play with. You can see these are all the ones I've downloaded before. And then if you really like one, you can just grab it and move it straight into your toolbar. And there you go. It's got easy use. You can close that up and open it again pretty easily by pressing this, and then you can customize the brushes by just tapping on this little thing next to it. Changing the size with pressure, with light pressure, heavy pressure, the flow, the spacing, the roundness, the hardness, anything that you can want. Super easy to use and super user friendly. That's basically the hot keyword of Sketchbook Pro for me, user friendly. All right, now with those basics covered, we'll get into a time lapse of me doing an actual drawing and I'll talk about the different tools that I'm using. Let's go. 
All right, so I'll explain in a sec why I'm doing this drawing with these two characters, but basically the way that I always start in Sketchbook Pro is on the very first layer, I do usually a bunch of thumbnail sketches. Admittedly, I did some thumbnail sketches before this video, so I knew what I'd be drawing. And then I just do a really rough layout of where I want the characters, what I want the composition to be, and just their basic body structures. And then I add a new layer, lower the opacity of the previous under layer, change my pencil color to red, usually I'll start with blue, then do the next layer up in red, it doesn't really matter what you do, I've switched it around before, and on this next layer up, that's when I start doing the more detailed roughs. And admittedly, this is why I don't do traditional very often, because I really like doing a super rough layer, then being able to lower the opacity a lot, and then doing the next layer of roughs, which I mean, I could use an eraser, but I'm just, I'm really burned into digital, people know that about me. Anyway, the reason that I'm doing this drawing is because A, I haven't drawn Venom on this channel very much at all and I really like Venom, and B, I watched Alita Battle Angel again last night and I really, really like. I liked it more the second time. I was mixed on it the first time, but I really liked it the second time, and in that fight where she was fighting, uh, what's his name, Stretchy, Stretchy Fingers McGee, uh, uh, Gruishka, when she was fighting Gruishka in that underground, cavern kind of scene, I just thought, ooh, wouldn't it be cool if instead of Grishka, it was Venom shooting some tendrils out at her and she's flying through them about to hit him? So I was like, that's a lot of fun, let's go with that for this drawing, because it's a bit more elaborate than what I usually do, so I can show off a bit more of the Sketchbook Pro stuff in a little bit more detail. Another thing that I'll just point out that I did in this that I do a lot is I drew the more detailed roughs for both characters separately so that I can move them around a little bit more easily after the fact with the movement tool. So, you know, if I want to change things up, it's a little bit easier. And a lot of the stuff that I do in Sketchbook Pro, if you've used any digital drawing software before, you'll see a lot of it is just stuff you can do in most drawing software. The reason I like Sketchbook Pro isn't because it has a ton of stuff that other software doesn't, it's because, and I know I'll sound like a broken record, it's just really user friendly. The layout is really clean, it's just really aesthetically pleasing to use, and all the tools are just really easily accessible. So even if you move on to Photoshop later in the future, which does have more tools, so it's more powerful, but it's also got a bigger learning curve. This is a great place to start. And, you know, I'd say not just a place to start. I'm probably gonna stick with this software for the foreseeable future. Anyway, you can see here that I've moved on to the inking stage and I was a bit of a dope at this part. I, for this video, was going to record the entire screen for the whole thing so you can see the tools I'm using. For this part, just for the inking part, I did what I usually do and just recorded the little, the, the little part without all the tools in it. But the only tool that I'm using is actually the same pencil brush that I used to do my roughing layer. And I'll put up on screen, I don't, I don't want to list off the numbers by from the top of my head, but I'll put up on screen how I have my hard pencil set because I love using it for the roughs and for the inking. It's just a good general purpose brush. Even though I have tons of brushes accessible to me on here, I really like just using a very limited number of brushes. I have two or three brushes that I use for texturing rocks, I have my go-to coloring brush, and then I have my rough and inking brush. And I don't really find I ever need more than that, although, when I do need more than that, it's really easy to find them. I know I probably sound like an advertisement for Sketchbook Pro, but they're not paying me for this video. The, I seriously just love Sketchbook Pro this much. It's so great drawing in it. User-friendly. User-friendly to the flippin' moon. But more of the stuff that I really, really like about it comes about in the coloring stage. I mean, that's partially because I'm kind of biased. I really like the coloring stage. It's my favorite part, but uh, yeah, so let's get into that because I'm about finished up the inking. All right, for coloring, I'll slow some parts a little bit down because some people have been wanting me to do a bit of a coloring tutorial. That's not what this video is, but I'm explaining my work process in Sketchbook Pro, so I'm gonna, you know, kind of give a bit of a tutorial about how I color in this thing. And the very first thing I do is make gradients of most parts of the characters and the background, some of the rocks I won't do that with, but the big important stuff like Venom, you can see if you press W you can get the little like picker tool, not the lasso tool, but like the magic wand kind of tool, hold shift, you can grab a whole bunch of parts of the character, then I just make a nice big gradient, 
going from like a more saturated color to a darker color on Venom. I did a brighter saturated purple to a dark gray. And then I do the same kind of thing on a bunch of different characters. And that's what I do for the flatting stage, which the flatting stage, a lot of people will be familiar with that term in comics as just the stage where you're laying out the base layer of colors without doing any any depth to them. I mean, the, the gradient gives it a tiny bit of depth, but not really. We'll get into that in shading and lighting, which is the next step. And what I do for this, I use two different types of layers. I make a new layer, and I usually start with the shadows, and I make that a multiply layer. The two types of layers that I use are multiply and glow, and normal. And you can see I got the multiply layer by above all the layers. There's that little bar that currently usually says normal in it. You tap on that and it's got all of your blending options. From there I picked multiply. And then I use a shadow that's usually, if it's a scene like this, I'll pick some kind of color that's out of the background or something because there's, you know, a bit of reflected light on the characters from the background so the color will inform the shadows on the character a bit. But for this one, I went with a yellow-ish shadow, like a dark, muddy kind of yellow because they're surrounded by like browny, yellowy rocks and stuff. So I use that and then what I do is I do just a layer of plain cell shading, but then I'll take a really light eraser and erase out some parts of it so that the shadows become little bits of gradients and then I'll add more details into the shadows after that. Then once I've done that for all the characters, if it's a more elaborate piece, sometimes I'll do a couple layers of that, but usually this is where I move on to the lighting. And for that, as I mentioned, I'll make a glow layer, which is kind of like, in Photoshop, I think it's pretty similar to an add layer. And in this case, I started using a like red-ish kind of glow, and I end up changing that later on to a yellow because yellow is a lot nicer matched up with purple, and I add a little bit of a, a yellow streak thing in the background that causes a bit of light on the characters to be yellow. And then for this part, I do a little bit more comic book style coloring, like stereotypical comic book coloring for digital coloring anyway, where you pick the lasso tool, grab out sections, and just like, uh, this is more, I guess, actual cell shading in a way. You grab out sections of the character, and then with a lighter brush, just brush in a bit of light and it, again, gives a bit of a, a great, it's kind of a similar technique to what I'm doing with the shadowing, except the opposite. Instead of erasing out some of the shadow or erasing out some of the lighting, I'm just adding it in in lighter waves. Also, usually I'll do the background shadows and lighting in different layers. So you can see by the end of this project, I've just got a whole bunch of different layers. It gets messy, I should name them. If I'm doing a really elaborate project, well, no, admittedly, I'm. I'm usually pretty bad about naming layers. But anyway, that's my whole Sketchbook Pro process. I hope you learned something. Let's take a look at the final drawing and I'll wrap this video up. My drawings are a lot better when I take more time to draw them. Funny how that works. Anyway, that's all for this episode. I hope you find Sketchbook Pro useful. I'll put a download link to it in the description. I really love using it, but again, any software can work. It's really more about the artist using it than the software itself. I just find this one really, really nice to use myself because it is user-friendly. All right, everybody, I'm Christian Pearson. This is Popcraft Studios, home of the nerdiest art videos on YouTube. Again, if you enjoyed this, please leave a like, subscribe, ring the bell, lots more art and animation stuff to come, and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.